This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I wanted to answer the question, will high energy costs destroy Bitcoin mining? And at the same time answer the question, will low energy costs destroy Bitcoin mining? The latter was actually the question asked by Casey Rooksby212. Did you forget the price miners will be paying for power will more than likely be next to zero or zero by 21? Thus, profitability for the Bitcoin miners will be there. Sure, at current energy costs could get bleak. For sure, there will be new abundant power source. I respond talking about the difficulty adjustment, which ensures that there's no energy price at which it becomes impossible for miners, at least some miners, to mine Bitcoin. If energy became very expensive globally, the Bitcoin algorithm would adjust to make it easier to mine blocks. And then Len J responded by asking, is that really true? How does that algo work? Does the algo assume a fixed price of energy and then adjust when it goes up? Who decide the energy price for the algo? So I wanted to really answer Len's question too as part of this. This is what a Bitcoin mining rig looks like. And this is what it does. It does SHA-256 hashing where you have an input, you hash it and you get an output and it tries to get a certain number of leading zeros. And in order to do that, it keeps changing what's called the nonce, it keeps changing this number, and it's basically a trial and error thing where you change the number and then you hash it and try to get the correct output. So this is what hashing is, this is what Bitcoin mining rigs are. Here are some important questions when it comes to Bitcoin mining. How many hashes per second can your Bitcoin mining rig do? And how much energy does it require to do those hashes? Newer Bitcoin mining rigs are much more efficient, in other words, they can do more hashes per unit of energy. Older rigs are less efficient. In other words, fewer hashes per energy. And again, remember hashing is just doing the SHA-256 trial and error. When it becomes difficult or unprofitable to mine, these older and less efficient mining rigs are the ones that get turned off first, which makes sense. Bitcoin miners actually never waste electricity. This is a myth because in fact, they are quite profit minded. They try to use electricity as efficiently as possible by upgrading to newer equipment whenever possible and also seeking out lower so lower cost sources of energy. So they're not going to sit up in the middle of an expensive city and drive up people's energy costs. This is just a myth. They want very low energy costs. There are a few factors which will determine whether you are able to mine Bitcoin profitably right now. Profitable mining is defined as your revenues are greater than your expenses. In other words, the money coming in is greater than the money coming out. So let's first look at the revenue side of things. Bitcoin miners earn what's called a block subsidy in addition to transaction fees for every transaction included in a block that they mine. Today, the Bitcoin block subsidy is 6.25 Bitcoin, but the subsidy will get cut in half down to 3.125 Bitcoin sometime in April of 2024. This is what's called the halving. Now, there are a number of unknowns when it comes to revenue. Miners do know they'll get the block subsidy plus transaction fees, but what's unknown is how much people will be willing to pay in Bitcoin transaction fees at any point in time. If blocks are more full, people will on margin pay higher fees. And then the other question is these transaction fees are quite volatile and they've ranged between close to zero to 6.25 Bitcoin, in other words, equal to the block subsidy or higher for a given block even over the past 12 months. The other question would be what will be the fiat value of that 3.125 Bitcoin plus the Bitcoin from transaction fees. And this matters because most Bitcoin miners pay their bills, mostly electricity bills, other energy bills using US dollars or other fiat. So if the price of Bitcoin in US dollars, for example, doubles and the block subsidy gets cut in half from 6.25 to 3.125 and transaction fees stay the same, then their fiat revenues are completely unchanged. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to subscribe. It really does help the channel. Click that subscribe button. Click the like button. Leave a comment, question, topic, suggestion for a future video. Also share this video with a friend or family member. So that's the revenue side of things. Now let's turn to the expense side of the equation. The expenses for Bitcoin miners are obviously the cost of the Bitcoin mining rigs. This is capital equipment. This is a capital cost. So it's expressed as depreciation over time. And then of course you have the cost of electricity and everyone in the world has a different cost of electricity. If you're a large miner, you may be able to negotiate more favorable rates with the utility company, etc. If Also, if you live next to a private mountain stream, know how to set up a water turbine, your electricity costs are essentially zero, at least after you've generated enough free electricity to pay for the cost of the water turbine 
and generator. So in this case, this Bitcoin miner would not be taking electricity from anyone. They would have their own source. And the cost of that electricity would be essentially zero. At certain times in parts of Texas, when the wind is blowing and the sun is shining, the cost of electricity is free or even negative. In other locations, the cost of electricity can be so high that it doesn't make sense to mine Bitcoin there. However, if your Bitcoin mining rigs are more efficient, you could conceivably mine more Bitcoin than someone who has a lower cost of electricity, but fewer or less efficient machines. So to summarize, whether you're able to profitably mine Bitcoin depends on at least three main factors, as I understand it, how energy efficient and fast your mining rigs are, your electricity costs, and the fiat price of Bitcoin. These are the really th large three factors. And each of these three factors does move around over time. Electricity costs may be fixed for five years or so, but they can move around over time. Obviously the fiat price of Bitcoin moves around over time. And then Bitcoin mining rigs, they get, uh, they depreciate over time and eventually need to be replaced. And you never know how much it's gonna cost to buy a new machine. Now, if your expenses to mine Bitcoin are greater than your revenues, you may choose to turn off those unprofitable mining rigs and keep the profitable ones running. You may even choose to mine at a loss for a short period of time, betting that the Bitcoin that you earn will pump in fiat price over the next few days or next few weeks and thus bail you out. So temporarily you're mining unprofitably, but if those Bitcoin you receive go up fairly rapidly in purchasing power, you may be breaking even or even having a profit when it comes to paying your electricity simply because the appreciation of the fiat price of Bitcoin. Now, if your mining is consistently unprofitable, you're probably first gonna turn off your unprofitable rigs. And if a lot of people do this, if a lot of people turn off their rigs and stop mining, the hash rate, the overall hash rate in terms of calculating hashes of the Bitcoin network falls. That means that it'll take longer for the network to find the next winning block. And so blocks begin to come in more slowly. Maybe blocks start to come in every 11 minutes instead of every 10 minutes. And after 2016 blocks, which is approximately two weeks, assuming 10 minute average block time, so it can be a little more than two weeks or a little less than two weeks, but after 2016 blocks, the Bitcoin port protocol will automatically adjust to make it easier to mine blocks. Bitcoin protocol understands nothing about energy costs or mining rig costs or efficiency or anything like this. Bitcoin protocol only understands that blocks are coming in too slowly, and so it makes it easier to mine. If blocks are coming in too quickly, by contrast on average, maybe nine minute blocks instead of 10 minute blocks, then after 2016 blocks, the protocol will make it more difficult to mine blocks. And this is what's called the difficulty adjustment. It can ratchet up, it can ratchet down. And this is really one of the most impressive things about Satoshi's invention, because the difficulty adjustment ensures that one can have access, one can transact fairly regularly on the Bitcoin network because there's a new block every 10 minutes on average. Maybe one day the block will take 30 minutes. Uh, maybe you'll have a shorter block that takes two minutes, but really on average, it's 10 minutes on average. And if it's not, then the difficulty adjustment kicks in. Difficulty adjustment also ensures a relatively consistent issuance rate for new coins for each epoch. So for example, 6.25 new Bitcoin every 10 minutes on average today, 3.125 new Bitcoin after the April 2024 halving. Difficulty adjustment also ensures that someone, though not necessarily you, and this is important, ensures that someone can mine Bitcoin profitably at any, any energy input price and any Bitcoin fiat price. So Bitcoin miners were able to mine profitably when one Bitcoin was worth $100. They will be able to mine profitably when one Bitcoin is worth $100,000 or $100 million. Again, you may not be able to mine profitably or I may not be able to mine profitably because our energy costs are higher than other people's or our machines are less efficient than other people's. But someone on the network will always be able to profitably mine Bitcoin at any Bitcoin price or any energy price. So some miners may drop off because their mining becomes unprofitable, the hash rate falls, and then the network makes it easier for those who remain on the network to mine profitably. And if it's easy and profitable to mine Bitcoin right now, lots of people will buy new rigs or dust off their old rigs and plug them in and the hash rate will head back up. Over the past few years, we heard lots of FUD that miners would all die if Bitcoin's price fell to 10K or 5K or something like this, which is absolute nonsense. When Bitcoin's price was at 10K or 5K many years ago, Bitcoin miners were doing fine and they would do fine again, even if it fell down that low because of the difficulty adjustment. So this is absolute nonsense. If energy prices spike or tumble, 
if Bitcoin prices spike or tumble, there will still be lots of people mining Bitcoin and the difficulty adjustment ensures that that's the case. So at this point, we can return to Casey Rooksby's question, what would happen if the price of electricity goes to zero? What happens if electricity becomes free? First of all, this is obviously highly unlikely since demand for electricity always goes up over time. For example, I used to have no air conditioning when I was younger. I used to have zero electronics essentially, and now I have air conditioning, multiple computers, multiple phones that are always being charged, etc. Advanced civilizations and wealthier civilizations use a lot more energy than less advanced civilizations. And this is not a bad thing. This is a good thing. This is how you become a spacefaring civilization. It takes energy to shoot rockets into space. Space. There used to be no AI as well. And now we have giant data centers for ChatGBT, not to mention the internet, etc. So demand for electricity constantly moves up over time. And the people who produce electricity, they're not doing this just for the charity of it all, but they want to be able to cover their own input costs whether that's very cheap nuclear input costs or something else, they want to be able to cover these input costs and make a profit as well. But if electricity were free for some reason globally, this is what I think would happen. The Bitcoin miners would compete solely on the basis of their mining rigs because everyone would have access to free energy. Again, this is quite unlikely. It's just a thought experiment. But in this scenario, Bitcoin miners would compete solely on the basis of the efficiency and power of their mining rigs and this arms race to create faster and more efficient, more hashes per unit of energy mining rigs would continue. Postscript, Bitcoin mining incentivizes the development and build out of new electricity infrastructure. So there's this symbiotic relationship between Bitcoin mining and electrical grids. Bitcoin mining also helps to monetize electricity that would be otherwise wasted. For example, hydroelectric plants that keep churning out electricity even when people are sleeping. And there's no point turning off the hydroelectric plants because the river is still flowing, that electricity is being generated, and it's very difficult to store or send large amounts of electricity over long distances. If you want to learn more about how Bitcoin mining is helping this African village, I'll link to this article in the description notes below. And this is by a couple of guys who are definitely not Bitcoiners, but they were quite impressed by what Bitcoin mining is doing for this small African village. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.